Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And it's hard to believe that the Apple Card has been out for about two months now. And ever since my initial review of the Apple Card, Apple has actually added some updates and new information to the Apple Card that wasn't present in my original review. So for this video, I wanted to go over what some of those changes were and just give you an updated perspective on what it's been like using the Apple Card over the past two months. First of all, let's go over some preliminary information about the Apple Card. So of course, everyone by this point probably knows that the Apple Card has a reward system. Right now, it currently offers 1% cash back every time you use your physical Apple Card, 2% cash back every time you use Apple Pay, and then 3% cash back every time you use it at an Apple Store or for an Apple service. Think of buying something on iTunes or for a subscription like Apple Music or iCloud Storage. What has changed since my initial review of the Apple Card is that Apple has expanded the 3% category to other merchants. Right now, as of the making of this video, the 3% cashback reward category has been expanded to places like Walgreens, Uber, and T-Mobile. Personally, I think this makes the Apple Card a much more attractive card. The more merchants they get on board with this 3% cashback category, the better this card is going to be. Now, currently, it seems like Apple is adding one new merchant around every month, and they say they have plans to add even more merchants down the line, so hopefully Apple keeps expanding the 3% category, and hopefully merchants don't kind of leave this list on other cards. It seems like there's kind of a revolving door where you get these increase in percent cash back, depending on the merchant. Right now, it has held steady with Walgreens, Uber, and T-Mobile, but who knows what the future will hold. All I know is that I really hope Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks signs up soon for this 3% cashback reward category so I can start getting 3% rewards on my coffee. Now, what certainly is consistent about this experience is that all of these merchants to get this increased reward, you need to use Apple Pay. And this has kind of been Apple's mission statement with the Apple Card. Aside from making a credit card, they very much want you to be using and adopting Apple Pay. And I think that strategy has worked pretty well, especially on me. I know I probably wouldn't have used Apple Pay in certain situations, but because there is an increase in rewards, now every time I go into a store, even if I'm not sure that they use Apple Pay, I will kind of try and look at the credit card machine, see if I can see the Apple Pay symbol, or in some instances, I'll ask the merchant, hey, do you guys accept Apple Pay? Because I really want that increase in 2% rewards rather than 1% with the physical card. And that kind of goes hand in hand. It also makes me less likely to use that physical titanium Apple card, which kind of stinks because the titanium Apple card is really cool. But hey, I guess that's why Apple released a titanium Apple Watch, so now I can pay with either my titanium card or my titanium Apple Watch, so either way I'm paying with titanium. So let's talk a little bit more about those rewards. Now is 3%, 2%, and 1% cash back a nice bonus? Yes, but that's just what it is, a bonus. If you're spending money on your Apple Card, the reward system isn't going to change your life. So for example, if we take a look at my Apple Card spending for this period, it was Apple season, so I was spending a lot of money. Currently, I have a balance of $6,311.30. Right now, if we look at my cash rewards, we can see that it is $148.21. Again, I do review technology on this channel, so I bought a couple of iPhones and an Apple Watch, so that's why the spending is so high for this month, but it's also one of the reasons why I have so much rewards cash especially because of that 3% cash back when shopping at the Apple store. And listen, an extra $148 is something I'm not going to complain about. I'm very happy to have that extra cash sitting in my wallet. Again, just to reiterate my previous point, look at how much money I had to spend to get this $148 in rewards cash. The reward system isn't suddenly going to change your life, but it is a nice bonus to have. Now, one of the things I do really enjoy about the Apple Cards reward system is that getting these rewards is pretty much instant. Apple calls this daily cash, and it's really not daily because you do have to wait for the payment to process, but once the payment's processed, and that usually takes about one full day, the reward cash is instantly available to use on your Apple wallet. 
This loads into an Apple Cash card, and because it's in an Apple Cash card in your Apple Wallet, that means you can instantly use it with Apple Pay. So that reward system is pretty flexible in what you can do with it. So you can either spend it instantly once you get your rewards, you can send it over to your bank and save it up there, or you can even send it off to friends through messages. Another experience with using the Apple Card is that this all takes place in the Wallet app and the app is designed pretty well. Now, one of the things it does do is that it gives you a bunch of different categories that are color coded. The different categories include yellow for shopping, orange for food and drinks, purple for services, green for travel, blue for transportation, pink for entertainment, and red for health. You can see this spending in either a weekly or monthly chart, and you can also see this reflected on the Apple card inside of the app. It will change color depending on which categories you purchase from. Overall, while I like the weekly and monthly spending charts, I find them pretty helpful in gauging just how much I've been spending. I don't really think the color-coded categories are that helpful. The color coding hasn't impacted the way that I use my Apple card. So for example, I'm usually just buying groceries, which is the orange category, or I'm just usually buying something that's in the shopping category, which seems to be a pretty broad category. There's a few entertainment charges and sometimes a health charge, but sometimes that can be miscategorized as well. For example, I bought a can of whipped cream at Walgreens and they put that under the health category spending. I don't think whipped cream is a health item. Of course, in this app, you can also see what you purchased for this month as well as previous months. Now, another thing in this app is actually where you go to pay off your Apple Card balance. During the unveiling of the Apple Card, Apple's mission statement was actually to help consumers by helping them avoid fees and interest charges. On the fees front, Apple is accomplishing this by not charging you any sort of late fee or really any fees in general. However, that doesn't mean that you can't just pay your card. If you don't pay your card by the due date, you will continue to accrue interest. Now, I actually had a few comments in my previous Apple Card videos about how credit cards work. Some people thought that you would automatically be charged interest even if you paid your balance off in full. That's not how it works, so let me run you through an example. Let's say you spend $100 this month. If your due date is on the 30th and you pay off all $100 by the 30th, you will not be charged anything extra. It's like you were paying with cash, there's no additional fees or additional interest. Now, let's say you don't pay off the full $100. Let's say you make a minimum payment of $25, or let's say you don't make the payment at all. That's when you will start to be charged interest and that can keep growing over time. And Apple's interest rates for their credit card is actually pretty high. So when I signed up for the Apple card, I got an interest rate of 23.99%. And that's by far the highest of any credit card I own. However, after two months, my interest rate has actually lowered just a little bit to 23.74%. Now, this is a variable interest rate. So again, it could go even lower than that. And I wonder as I keep using my Apple card, if it will continue to go lower or if it might sneak back up to that 23.99% area. However, even though Apple's interest rates are high, they do a great job of encouraging you to pay off the full balance every month. That's because when you go to pay your Apple card, it defaults to the full amount payment where a lot of other credit cards usually default to the minimum payment. It's a small change, but it's a behavioral change making you think paying the full amount balance is normal rather than paying just the minimum, which is what a lot of people do with their credit cards. You can pay less than the full amount, of course, and as you do this, Apple clearly states how much interest you will be charged. This is the first and only credit card that I've ever owned that actually gives you this information in really crystal clear plain text. Most other cards just give you your percentage rate and if you wanted to find out how much interest you were going to be charged by making a payment that wasn't the full amount, you would just have to do the math manually. Overall, through a combination of encouraging you to pay the full amount and giving you ample warning of your interest charges when you're not paying the full amount, 
Apple has lived up to its mission statement of encouraging consumers to pay less interest. Another big selling point with the Apple Card is security and privacy. The Apple Card does this in a few ways. So for example, the physical card actually has no card number on it. All of that information lives on your phone. If your Apple Card is ever lost or stolen, it is incredibly easy to change those numbers through the app. And because that card number is tied virtually to your iPhone and not necessarily the credit card itself, that makes the interruptions of losing or someone stealing your credit card information a lot better. So for example, you could continue to make online purchases because you have the card number on your phone and you can continue to use the Apple Card through Apple Pay. The Apple Card also does a great job at customer service because a lot of this is done through the Messages app on your iPhone. So one day I saw a charge I didn't recognize, the customer service on the Messages end, walk me through the steps to make sure that I made this purchase. And lo and behold, I actually did make the purchase. It was for an iPad for this channel. There was no fraud or anything like that, but contacting customer service was definitely a easy and painless process. I also wanna update you on the physical Apple Card's durability itself, because when the Apple Card was released, Apple released a care guide for the credit card, and they included some things like maybe a leather wallet could stain the Apple Card. Well, after two months of living inside my leather wallet, I don't see any signs of staining on the Apple Card. However, my Apple Card was recently dropped on a restaurant floor, and you can see that on the side of it, there is a a small chip in the titanium. Okay, so after two months of using the Apple Card, is it better than every other credit card out there? Actually, I would say it is, but it's better in very, very small ways. All of these little things, like how Apple implements its reward system, how you can contact customer service, how you manage your Apple Card through the app, all of those little things combined with Apple's focus on security and privacy make me prefer using my Apple card more than any other credit card I own. And I really like Apple's mission statement of never charging a late fee and encouraging users to pay off the full balance or warning them with what sort of interest charges they would accrue if they don't pay the full balance. However, there are still some negatives. For example, the only way to pay your Apple Card is through an iPhone or an iPad with no easily accessible web interface. Although Apple encourages you to pay your balance in full, the Apple Card still has pretty high interest rates. The Apple Card is also limited to you, so you couldn't get a second Apple Card to give to a family member. And I think the 1% cash back on the physical Apple Card is a little bit too low. I would really like to see that be raised to at least 1.5%. But for me, I think the positives far outweigh those negatives for the Apple Card, and I would be really interested to hear what you think. Have you signed up for an Apple Card? Have you been using it? How have you been enjoying the experience? Or if you haven't signed up for an Apple Card, let me know in the comments below. As a side note, if you got to the end of this video, you probably like my videos, which means you might also enjoy a podcast done by me. And I recently just launched a podcast with my friend Travis MCP. I will leave a link to that podcast down in the description below. I would be really thankful to you if you gave it a listen and left us some feedback. All right, hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.